All right, welcome back to Waste Some Time with Jason Green. I am Jason Green, bringing you brand new interviews right here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, become a channel member, sign up for Patreon, all those links in the description. I started a new series on this show. I've been working on it. Uh, going to locations from some of your favorite music videos and then talking to the people who were in those videos and getting a little behind the scenes. That led me to watching a lot of these classic music videos and wondering what happened to some of the actors. Now, for those of you who watch this channel, you are obviously familiar that there's a lot of rat content on this channel. And uh, when I was a kid in 1985, MTV was a huge thing. Music videos were a major thing. Everybody got their music from MTV. And uh, the Lay It Down video, second single from Invasion of Your Privacy, uh, was one of those extremely memorable videos. Everyone remembers the kid snapping his fingers, making a wish at the birthday party. Uh, and, uh, and he had a distinct look, still has it. And a lot of people said, what happened to him? Where is he now? Well, the answer is you probably already know and you've probably seen him in countless projects. But uh, little Steven is here. We're going to talk to Whit Hertford in just a moment right after this. Just All right, well, let's not waste any time, right? That's the name. Whit Hertford is here. How's it going? Hi, Whit. Hi, hi, hi. How are you? Whit, I'm so glad that you were able to do this. And I know a lot of rat fans and music video fans are excited to see you. And as I said in the introduction, uh, it's not one of these shocking things that you, uh, you robbed a video store or you passed away or went to prison. You've had quite the career uh, since the Lay It Down video. I know. I, I am just as shocked as anybody that I was able to avoid that fate. But uh, it wasn't for lack of trying. I definitely, I definitely have had my, my bouts of a little too uh, close to shaves. Mm -hmm. I think right now a lot of people are saying, holy shit, I know him. And then they're going through uh, the countless times that they've seen you. We'll talk about uh, some of the other things you've done and we'll talk about what you're up to now. Uh, writer, cool. director, and artist as well. Uh, but first, we, we've got to start with uh, a little bit. Uh-oh. Uh, we'll is that, start with is that loud? Do you want me to shut that off? It's just No, no, it's thing. fine. It sounded like someone going by. It's fine. Yeah. Um, uh, but so let's talk a little bit about Lay It Down. Was this your first acting job? No. Uh, it was pretty up there because I think I was like six or seven. And now I'm uh, 72. Mm -hmm. You look good. Yeah. Um, but I started when I was four. I did like, uh, by the way, can we swear on this thing? Are we good? Okay. Um, I, I did like a Care Bear shoe commercial when I was four years old. So this was pretty, I mean, this was one of the earlier things. It was definitely uh, one of the more exciting things for sure. Yeah. So you're, you're a child actor. Uh, you had an agent. Yeah, I had the same agent all, all growing up. Which is a, a sometimes a rare thing, but a, a good thing. Totally. Yeah, yeah. So you find out you're going to be in this music video. How do, you, how do they tell you? Do you audition? You know what? I don't remember the audition. I was trying to rack my brain. I don't remember the audition specifically. But uh, one thing that has stayed the same is that I'm still really fucking freaky looking. And so I think that they saw my Damien qualities as a child and they liked it. Now, that's not to say that Steven, who I was playing, has the same freaky qualities. But I think like the dark hair and the eyes, that kind of was similar. And uh, I don't even know if I auditioned. I might have just gotten, gotten the gig at that point. I don't know. But uh, I do remember being excited about it, even at seven, maybe I was eight. I don't fucking remember. It was around that ballpark. Uh, I always looked a lot younger than I was, um, so it's hard to gauge. Um, well, it was 1985 that that video... Uh, right, was. okay. So I was born in 78, so seven years old, right? Um, and, uh, and I was... I had just... I think I had just gotten my first drum. And so I was, I was wanting to be a drummer. 
And so I was, uh, I was pretty keen on all the hair metal bands and knew of the group uh, because my like surrogate older brother played in some like third tier bands that opened for groups like Warrant and Rat and Skid Row and all that stuff. So I knew of the, the era and I was, I was pretty pumped on it. Yeah, so, and, and we should point out in 1984, Round and Round was a pretty huge video for the band, Milton Berle right. premiering in it, and uh, a, a giant single. So this was sort of a big uh, a follow-up. It's the second single, Bo Hill, who produced the record, wanted Lay It Down to be the first single. They went with You're In Love, which was a, a moderate hit as well. But uh, Lay It Down video was one of those videos in the 80s, as you remembered, I'm sure the audience, Twisted Sister, I think, kind of started that trend of having little uh, uh, cinematic moments before the video and after the video. And it was the thing to do. Um, according to IMDb, the director of the video is Marshall Burl. Is that what you remember? That makes sense. Who's that? So Marshall Burl was Milton Burl's uh, grandson. And he, managed, yeah, and he managed Rat. Uh, and he had a lot of this makes sense, Jason, is because right before that, I did a oh, this is so wild. I've never connected this. I did a um mini series about like Sid Caesar and Milton Burl growing up in New York or whatever. And I played one of the other lackey kids. So I knew even at like seven, I knew who Milton Burl was and seeing the round and round. Uh, video. I was like, I, I knew all about it. It's pretty crazy. It's funny that that's probably the connection um, yeah. where Marshall had seen you. And yeah, he was a huge part of Rat's success. And uh, Stephen credits him for a lot of the ideas, for the imagery and things that went with that band. The cinematographer, uh, he went on to have a lot of successful credits as well. Uh, and some TV shows that I think you were involved with actually too, but he... Uh, he just finished the Fuller House show that was on Netflix. He had done Family Matters, a whole bunch of it. You yeah. obviously were on the original uh, Full House. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, yeah. so a lot of the people had gone on to do other things. So do you remember where that video was filmed? It was a soundstage. I want to say that it was, let me, let me see if I can nail it. Was it Sunset Gower? That makes sense. And we, we can ask, uh, we'll have to ask some rats if they can remember. It's funny is I'm, I'm asking somebody who was seven years old uh, at the time, uh, as opposed to a rock star who's probably drank and done a lot of drugs since then. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a question of who, who, can remember, uh, who can remember better. So you show up, you know that you're going to be playing um, a young Steven, you know you're going to be in a birthday party scene. Did yeah. they film the band scenes the same day you were there? Yes, afterward. So you and I did. wanted to stay around and watch, but I think they were worried about kids being around those guys. <laughs> yeah. So you didn't really get to see the live performance? No, I just saw them uh, showing up and I saw the set. Right. And you, so, so both the sets, the birthday party set and then that weird kind of dream set were all in the same place. Yeah, and I rem what I remember is uh, one of the specific memories was that Bozo the Clown was in it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember that being kind of like a big deal as well. Now, I don't know if that was Bozo or I don't know. <laughs> I don't know exactly which, but I think that's who he's supposed to be. Uh, and I don't know who the actor was who played the clown. I'm sure you don't remember at this point. No, I always was under the impression that it was the legit dude. It, it might be. We're going to have to, again, it's a, que a rat question um but so you're they, you're having a birthday party and there's a young lady who will uh, turn into uh, uh the actress marianne who is the actual actress on the cover of the invasion album uh, she's Crazy. in the video as well um so what else what do you remember about your 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 birthday party uh i remember that 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 i loved it and it was really fun <laughs> i did I do remember that when they had me do the the finger lip thing, and I had no I had no context for that. And when they had me do it, I did remember thinking like, "This is a little, this is a little weird." Okay, um, and then doing it and feeling kind of badass about it. Um, 
Uh, I'm also, hey man, you know, I, I would say that the first crush I had was in Jewish preschool, um, which is weird because I grew up not Jewish, but I went to a Jewish preschool in, in Burbank. Um, and I, that was my first crush. So then when we had this birthday party scene and the little girl who played my crush, I was transfixed. Loved her, loved her. And then the adult version, because I was already probably a complete pervert, I thought that she was super hot as well. So, you know, these were these were great seeds that have still stayed in my uh, in my in my DNA. Well, and uh, it be, you were beginning your your own rock and roll life uh, a, a little early. That video, it's funny. It's it's one day. It's one of you know hundreds of credits that you have. But it was a big part of um, the 80s and seen by so many people. Like I said, the, the image of you snapping your fingers at, at the birthday party and making a wish is one that uh, many people um, remember. And as you said, uh, you used the word freaky, but uh, your, your eyes and your look, which and you always did look younger and you were able to do that in many parts um, for a long time to come. But that scene, uh, I always say that Stephen, uh, at some point should open, when they play Lay It Down, they should show the scene of you blowing out the candles. Uh, oh, yeah. be, be I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a pretty cool uh, anecdote about that. I don't want to like jump ahead if you have an agenda. No, go ahead. Okay. But I remember that it was such a, like, seeing music videos on MTV was such a, as you said in the intro, big part of the the culture and um i lived in suburbia i lived out in agora hills which is for people that know uh california it's in between ventura and los angeles uh santa barbara and los angeles and it's just sleepy little suburbia and we had a mall you know because the mall was huge back then and i was getting accosted all the time when that video was in rotation in so much that my mom bless her heart this is such a fucking cringe memory but she uh she made a t-shirt that was a screen print of invasion of your privacy i think might have been a different album but on the back in like puff lettering <laughs> mm -hmm. it did say yes i am the kid from the rat video Amazing. <laughs> Which like, now that I think about that is such a, a chapter out of like a sad memoir of being a kid actor. But that was a true thing that happened. My mom really did do that. Which is weird because she liked the attention. But I think she just wanted to kind of like make sure we were doing our shopping. Yeah, it, 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 I, I don't want to jump ahead too much just yet. But did she make a shirt that said, I'm the kid from Jurassic Park later? Mm -hmm. No, no, we didn't. No, that was handled totally differently. It was a different part of your career. We'll talk yeah. about that in a little bit. I want to talk about uh, the Lay It Down video just a little more. And that was one of my main questions. Did people recognize you? And of course, you're on TV constantly. Back then, there was only so many videos that played on MTV per day. So Lay It Down could have played four, five, six times a day, if not more. And, um, and so your face is everywhere and as you and it is pretty uh, recognizable uh were, was it exciting it was totally exciting because i thought rat was such a kick-ass band and i you know i i admired those musicians and kind of that lifestyle i mean i like i said started playing drums at eight kind of at at wanting to copy my surrogate older brother who was one of my dad's friends um, and he was like, you know, probably 19 or something at that point. So he was in the thick of it. And uh, I found a, a kid that was a year older than me. Uh, big shout out to Kyle Mortensen. He played guitar. And so the two of us would be in my room at nine years old doing covers of all of these, these hair metal songs. And... Uh, and I was playing just a snare at that time because my mom was really smart. She decided if I wanted to play an instrument, specifically the drums, 
that I needed to master each drum one by one. So she got me a snare and then she got me a hi-hat and then she got me a full kit. Uh, and so I was playing that snare as though it was a double bass kit. I was just jamming on every bit of it, hitting the rims, hitting the side. And, um, and so I, yeah, I loved it. I mean, it, it gave me a bit of credibility. And I think, you know, older kids probably were seeing me in that video and thinking that was pretty fucking cool too. I'm sure. Uh, did you ever get to see a rap concert? I never did. Never. That's a, big, that's cool. a big bummer. Yeah, it would have been cool if you would have been able to see. Do you, do you talk about being, uh, being mobbed though. Uh, you'd be at a place where 20,000 people uh, know you. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and who knows, as far as rat goes, who knows if we'll ever uh, see uh, a rat reunion. That's, uh, I don't know how up you are on their world, but obviously Robin Crosby uh, has passed away uh, right. and the rest of the guys have legally squabbled and other things uh, for a long time. But uh, I, was, I was telling you when we were talking earlier, at some point, it'd be great to have you come out to see Steven. He's going to be playing uh, the whiskey later this year. And I would love it. I would, it would love be really it. Fun. Yeah, it would be really fun to uh, uh, connect you guys. So uh, that, that video, like as I said, it's a one day in your life, one morning, um, and you were already a, a child actor, and you were going to go on to do um, so many more things. I tell people all the time, uh, if, they, if they look at your IMDb, <laughs> or they look at your uh, your Wikipedia, they would be uh, surprised maybe to go, oh yeah, I've seen him. And of course, a lot of people recognize you from the original Jurassic Park movie. Your line about the six foot turkey is uh, quite memorable. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. Uh, this does not normally happen. Like the, these sort of... Um, you know, days of nostalgia where I get to reconnect about things like this. They're, they're pretty few and far between, but uh, I am doing a Jurassic Park themed uh, comedy show here in LA that they called me and I'm doing it this weekend over at Dynasty Typewriter. Um, and so I'm gonna go in and, and do a bit. I told him I thought it'd be really funny if I went in sort of like, uh, who's the guy that Andy Kaufman used to play all the time? Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. I've said this name, uh, Tony Clifton. Tony Clifton. If I went in with like big sunglasses and like prosthetics, like a bunch of Coke under my nose and just was like <laughs> an animal about it, I thought that that would be really funny. I think they were a little uh, scared, the guys that are hosting the show. But I told them, I said, you know, I don't really have any um, shame about that stuff at all. I'm very, I feel whether it's Rat or Jurassic or some of the other things that I did, like they were all pretty quality, really quality things. It wasn't like I was doing, you know, an earnest, you know, movie or something like this, Ernest Saves Christmas or something. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, uh, to be directed by Steven Spielberg as a young person it, it is obviously a, a major, <laughs> a major moment. Uh, he's very and... cool guy, he's very normal. I think that, that I did that when I was, 14, and again, I looked like 10, but yeah. I was 14, and, which is a very strange time in a, a kid's life. Uh, it, it's like the height of puberty for me, and I had a stepdad who I hated, and he came with me on the shoot, which I'll never forgive my mom for. And uh, But the thing I remember the most about that shoot was that it was that Steven was so normal. And I thought, how is a guy this famous able to be as relatable and gracious and kind as he was and, and is? And, um, you know, that's a, that's a pretty cool life lesson for a kid to take away is to like, look, you don't need to let fame and celebrity destroy you. Yeah. Uh I'm naming that is because it's such an iconic movie and celebrating anniversaries of Jurassic Park. And, and I think it's one of the things that people obviously now are going, oh, man, I recognize from from that. Uh, but right. that's not to say that uh, you did plenty of other things. Poltergeist 2, I think a lot yep. of people had seen. And uh, was that a scary set to be on? Uh, that one was. Yeah, actually, I did a couple of horror films. I did a Freddy Krueger 
Part five. Relation, the fifth one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't as scary. Uh, but Poltergeist was really fucking scary. Um, mainly because the actor that was playing Kane um, was, I mean, he was ancient looking. I don't know if he was really that old. But that guy was on death's doorstep and you could feel it. And it was just heavy. Like we, the scene that I did was with me and my, my actual sister. And we're in this like cavern and we had, to, we had to cry. And I remember that my dad actually came onto that shoot and <laughs> they, he really wanted real tears, the, the director. And you know, on a set, you're always pressed for time. And so they, I remember my dad came up to myself and my sister in between takes. It was like, hey, Wit, uh, your mom just called and he had said that our, our cat had died, which wasn't true. And so we started sobbing and then they started rolling cameras, which sounds like he was such a menace. He wasn't a menace, but it, like whenever I share that anecdote, I'm like, that sounds like some little rascal shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, pretty heavy. Yeah. But they got it. We're really crying, they, man. We're really crying. Yeah, they got it. Similar, though, uh, with the Jurassic Park scene, you were supposed to kind of be angry, uh, a kid, where you, and you said your stepdad was there. Did you use that towards your, your acting? Yeah. And I've said this in interviews before. There's a, there's a thing that got cut. Um, so it probably exists somewhere, but where I'm supposed to walk on the fossil before the, that line and kind of just be a brat about it. And Sam Neill screams at me and yells at me. And then I'm supposed to walk really close to the camera out of frame. And I remember Spielberg came over and he whispered to me and he was like, why don't you under your breath after he yells at you, call him an asshole. And I was so excited to do that. Mm -hmm. Again, I grew up kind of re very religious and my stepdad was uh, just not a cool dude. He was a mean guy. And so the fact that I had this like trump card, I was like, look, Steven Spielberg is telling me I got to say these words. So, and I did, and I remember doing that and feeling like pretty cool about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm sure. Yeah. That was a, if, if Steven Spielberg says to do it. Uh, but no, it's okay. Uh, it's obviously okay. So those are some of the uh, horror movies. A lot of television, obviously, in that time. Some of these people were members, some maybe not as much. Cagney and Lacey, uh, famous cop show. Uh, before, uh, uh, and, and I, I got to talk about some of the other ones, but but before we get to that, Whit, I got to tell you, we got a surprise, uh, and I've been waiting to make this one happen for a while. So uh, anyway, joining us right now, Whit, uh, since you're little Steven, I thought we should bring big Steven in, and so... Here he yeah. Is. Hell yeah. Fuck yes, man. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> what a long time coming, my friend. Wow, dude. No shit, huh? You look great. Years. You look great. Thank you, brother. And yourself. Hey, man, I got to tell you, you know, it was my... <laughs> It was my birthday the other day, and I'm thinking, wow, I'm, I'm surprised nobody took that clip and threw that in there because it was such an iconic thing. I still hear today people go, oh, what's your birthday? Or, you know, hey, what do you want for your birthday? <laughs> Make a wish or whatever it was, right? Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. 38 years ago, June 1985, the video comes out. Witt and I were talking, Stephen. Did Marshall Burl direct the video? He had a lot to do with all the videos, to be honest with you. And, and you know, he, he was pretty clever because, you know, where he comes from with Milton and the, the whole vaudeville, you know, thing. It was kind of cool that we were always tongue in cheek and, you know, had fun things going on instead of, you know, everybody being serious on fire, blowing each other up shit, you know. So yeah. Yeah, it's quite possibly... A with it you know Witt remembered that he after they, they shot the the acting scenes first they shot the music video later he remembers that he had to leave they they were concerned about having young people around uh, guys like rat oh i don't I'm, know if that was true but that's what it felt like 
<laughs> I, I'm sure they. I'm sure they did. It's, it wouldn't be the first. I mean, I would have loved it. For the record, Steve, I would have loved it. I would have hung out for weeks. <laughs> oh my God! I'm telling you, hey, I, I got. Uh, uh, we'll get and stuff. I want to send you the box set, the new rat box set, which was amazing. just amazing. Thank you, thank you. Get that to you, my friend. And uh, yeah, you know, they kept a lot of people away from us back in the day, like way cool. They didn't even want us around all those girls, you know. <laughs> so who knows? It was probably true. Might have been for the better. Uh, yeah. I got to tell you, I mean, now that you're, you're here, man, I would be remiss if I don't say like that, uh, you know, on a real sort of emotional and personal level, you know, when you're a seven, you're eight year old little kid and. And I wasn't a Hollywood actor. My mom kept us pretty normal, kept us out in suburbia. Uh -huh. But I, you specifically, brother, you were so cool and kind and didn't big time me. And I remembered that for fucking ever. And right. So yeah, man. I mean, you know, it was like, I mean, look, when we did videos, uh, some of that stuff, you know, Marshall would just throw in. So, of course, yeah. He had fun doing them and stuff, but yeah, you have to be professional, especially around, you know, kids. You don't want them <laughs> partaking in the wrong shit, you know. Well, and I'm sure, like, you're going, who's playing a little version of me? It was probably pretty cool to see that, like, such a cool guy was playing you, you know? Well, thank <laughs> you. I mean, some people think, I mean, it, it's so weird. Some people you were me and was that you it's like how can that be me come on now <laughs> right. I, oh i mean i get so many questions about that scene you know what did you wish for what did you wish for i don't know ask the kid you know you yeah, right. where, what did they tell you to wish for yeah they, I know. they said for me for wish to become you oh okay well, yeah. that, oh, well that was it, the wish now i know what to tell people because i don't know, you know yeah. Like, yeah 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 Let's uh, uh, listen, guys. We gotta. I, I mean, if you guys are okay with it, I think we gotta watch the video real fast. Uh -huh. Let's do it. Let's go. I don't know when the last. When is the last time either of you've watched this video? Uh, years. For Me. Sure. Years. Same thing. All right. Well, uh, we won't use the audio. You guys can talk. So here we go. Let's watch this video. So we can watch the. We can put the order in the beginning. <laughs> Okay, now, Stephen, blow out the candles. Wait, Stephen, don't forget to make a wish. All right, now we'll watch the video. We'll mute it. Chucko. The clown's name was Chucko, not Bozo. My bad. Chucko. I think he just wanted in and out. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved his hat. He's like, here we go. <laughs> Take a trip. So we don't know where Chucko is today. You know what I remember about, about your band in this specific video, Steve, is that like I was telling uh, Jason that uh, I, I would do a bunch of covers of your era groups with my buddy when we were like 9, 10, and I would be playing just a snare drum. Oh, wow. I remember my buddy Kyle that he always was trying to – copy Warren's like fingers, you know? Oh. And uh, and I remember he always told me, he's like, yeah, that's a signature move. Oh my, that yeah. is, did you ever get into music? Yeah, so I played, dr I've been, I've played drums in 10, 15 bands. None no. of them were that big, but um, yeah, I mean, I think this kicked it off. This kind okay. of was the thing that, that got me really excited. I always thought that that sexy move that Juan's doing, it was like, it was great. That was in my that was in my brain forever. He would hear that, I'm sure. But <laughs> that's uh, the the finger snap we just saw. That's definitely one of the iconic moments in this. Oh, yeah. without a doubt. I mean, God. how old are you when you're when you're shooting this, Steve? I think I was like, um, I say I was late in the game into the business. Uh, I know Warren was like 19 or 20 or something. I must have been about 28. Crazy. So Crazy, yeah. You know, doing Bobby symbol kick, fucking, it's it's perfect. It was fun. Wow, that's a trip, dude. To, to see you, man. What a fucking trip. 
I know, like, if you do this, it makes sense. You could still, my freaky eyeballs, you can still get it. <laughs> you know, Stephen, we were saying before you came on that a lot of people say, where is he now? And there he is whispering into the young lady's ears, as are you, uh, yeah. finding yourself in modern love. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Witt's done a lot of movies and TV shows, Stephen, that we've seen. He, uh, he's got a very memorable scene in Jurassic Park. He's been that on is- ton of shows and uh, uh, he's a voice actor. Now he's a writer and director and an artist uh, as well. Well, I think you and me ought to get together because there's a little movie thing that we're starting to dabble into about the band. The cool. plot stuff. Let, let's let Jason uh, give you my contact and let's keep in touch. I got to, right. but I have, you know, a box that I want to you. Look at, look at, there you are rocking out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You and me both had the girls there. It's cool. It's perfect. It's perfect. Well, well, brother, I fucking love, man. Thank you so much. This is so cool, man. Such a great time. Thank you for popping in. What a treat. And later this year, Stephen, as I told Wit, we'll be at the Whiskey A Go Go, and Wit, Wit lives in LA. He'll come on out, and we'll have another uh, reunion. Well, there you go. Come on, come on out and uh, introduce the band. Do something, man. Lo- I would love it. Are you kidding me? I'd fucking yeah. love it. You're in, man. Give them your yeah. time. Jason, I see you soon. We've got a road trip to make. And I'll see you Friday. Yeah, we're on our way to New York. Official StephenPiercy.com. Ready to rat and roll. You'll see you out there. Wit, love you, brother. I'll keep Love you too, man. See you, Steve. Thank you. All right. Well, that was a fun little, uh, a fun little surprise. Hell yeah. And, I, you know, with rock stars, you never know uh, if they're going to be punctual or if they're even going to show up. So while we're talking, I was like, you know what? I better get into some other parts of your career in case he did, uh, in case he doesn't make it. But uh, anyway, but that was fun. And how great would it be to see you on stage at the whiskey introducing him? Uh, Thirty eight years. Man, uh, not not just for my ego, even though I would love it, but like I think fans would fucking love it. Oh, a- absolutely. And, you know, you do a lot of these uh, uh, conventions and things. And Steven's starting to do some. I think it would be so much fun to have you guys appear together. Uh, I love know, it. I, I totally love it. Fans would um, would love to see it. We were talking about some of your credits. Uh, you, you know, obviously people are impressed with some of the big ones. Uh, Mr. Belvedere, though, uh, is high on my list. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. As a kid. Uh, uh, and... When you, if you, you know, my between our ages, you start to look back, you go, oh yeah, I, I remember that those scenes. I remember you on Full House. I remember yeah. you uh, on these things. And these sitcoms live forever. They totally live forever. It's interesting when Fuller House started. Uh, I was in, I think I was in London. Uh, I went to graduate school in London, and and had the time of my life. Um, and they were trying to get me to come back and do it, but I just, I couldn't make it work. Um, but yeah, it's weird how the things are cyclical, right? And they come back. You have this career uh, where people know you for lots of different things. As I said, heavy metal fans know you for Rat. Uh, yeah. um, uh, horror fans know Freddy Krueger uh, in Nightmare Street 5. They know Poltergeist. And then TV sitcom families might know you from that. I'm talking about the classic stuff. Obviously, later you would, you've done uh, Glee and Psych, and uh, you, you're still acting. Commercials as well. There's so many memorable commercials that you have appeared in. Because of your look, you, you have stood out. Uh, I feel like most uh, – well, I want to ask you first, do, what do you, people recognize you for the most? What do people come over and, and ask you about? Jurassic. Yeah. Yeah, it's Jurassic. I did do some stuff kind of, I, I, so I've had like three LA tours of duty. This is my home, but I've, I've boomeranged back three times. Um, and in my second stop, I did uh, some stuff on Glee and a TV show called Raising Hope. And so that kind of gave me a different, you know, audience. But yeah, it's, Without a doubt, it's it's Jurassic. And, you know, Jurassic with the new franchise kind of had a resurgence, so. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I, can, I, I can see that. Uh, but then on top of that, you now are part of the Star Wars universe, which. Yeah, which, it's crazy. I do remember when I got that, they, they sent me a, like a manila envelope from Lucasfilm when I got that gig. 
and the cover letter said, "With now that you're part of the Star Wars family. And I remember not thinking that was real. Like, like that really kind of took me out of it. And I was very, you know, I was emotional about it. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Even just to do, you know, a voice on one of the cartoons. It's, I've been very lucky. I've been very, very, very lucky. For those who are watching who might not know, uh, we're talking about Clone Wars. And, uh, and you voice one of the characters. And uh, that's a massive thing in the Star Wars world. And Clone Wars is one of the things that the fans take very serious. Yeah. Uh, and as you see, by doing the appearances that you do, people, um, all these different fandoms and universes that you're attached to, it, it, it's got to be a, a, it's a good thing. It's cool. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. When I do conventions, uh, there's like a bit of diversity, whether it's nostalgia or heavy metal or cartoons, animation or horror films. I, I've been able to have a bit of a, a diversified portfolio. Wait, do you think that when a casting director is looking for someone who looks, do you, do you think there's types they say, look, we're looking for a, a wit type, uh, uh, you know, and then you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just call me because I am the wit type? Maybe, I mean, I think the thing about it is it's like, I, I, I don't know if I was the world's greatest kid actor, but I know I took it very seriously. And so I think that sort of commitment is something that, uh, you know, the casting directors always, they always want in, in child actors because it's, it's long hours and, and it's just a tricky thing to do right. Um, and when, when I was doing it, uh, the same, you know, six to seven kids, we were always up against each other. So it was like me and Seth Green and Elijah Wood and, you know, a handful of guys. And uh, very often it would come down to Elijah and I. It was sort of like pick which dark haired, blue eyed kid you want. And um, he, he usually got it, which is totally fine. Because, um, I had this impression probably in my, towards the end of uh, high school where I was auditioning less. I wanted to just, you know, go to high school and play basketball, play in bands and, you know, hang out with girls. That's all I wanted to do. And I do remember that there was a moment when I was, you know, again, like maybe 18 or 19 and I was going to college and, and I started, um, studying theater just by happenstance. I didn't really know anything about theater. And it opened my eyes to, to Shakespeare and to, to the roots, to the good stuff. And, uh, you know, because I was filming TV Kids, so I didn't, I didn't know anything about that. And it, it completely opened my eyes. And I remember having this distinct feeling at 20 whatever that my real bread and butter as an actor was gonna be in my you know 40s and 50s. And that the grayer I got, the balder I got, the more life kicked my ass, uh, the better of an actor I was going to be. And it's not until maybe like this last year or, or the last two years where that feels like that might actually happen. Or that there's sort of, I don't know, I feel very excited about a couple of projects that I'm working on and just sort of the life roads that have taken me here. Uh, whereas, you know, some of my contemporaries, they're kind of on the tail end of things. I kind of feel this resurgence. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, with age becomes wisdom, they say. Uh, and that is definitely one of these things that uh, you've worked on your craft. And yeah. now you're at a place where it's time to show uh, that craft. Uh, You've done so many memorable parts and fun parts, but as you said, Shakespeare and things like that have become um, more of your interest and uh, an artistic uh, direction of it. You're a writer director. Explain a little bit about that to the audience. It's an avant-garde theater company called Riot Act, R-I-O-T-A-C-T. Gotcha. And, um, and I started it in grad school, like I said, in London. I was going to school and I, and I was talking to my mentor who was a, a wonderful guy named uh, Stephen Unwin, and he really, he and I really kind of took to each other. Um, just our sensibilities and personalities were a really good match. And 
I remember he came and he saw just this weird assignment that I did, or maybe it was like, it was just like a weird project that I did after hours. And, uh, and, and the whole school came, you know, 7.30 or 8 o'clock into the dance studio and saw this really sort of radical adaptation of a, of a late Elizabethan poem that I had adapted into this like teen sex comedy. And he, he put his arm around me and he said, you know, you got to go out into central London after class every day and start finding fringe theaters and pub theaters to start doing your work at. And, um, and I, I took him up on that. I mean, I ended up not really sleeping during the years that I was there because uh, I was just, I was on fire. And so, yeah, I started Riot Act then. We've now done, since 2015, we've done 15 to 20 productions. So usually about three a year, two to three a year. And uh, we're now here in LA at different venues, currently in Frogtown. And um, sometimes we do immersive stuff. And it's my favorite thing. It's my, it's my baby. It's my creation. And it's, um, it's got a lot of, of, of me in it, whether it's the scripts we're writing or I'm directing. You know, you can't force things like this, Jason. So I, I, I have felt like I've lived seven of my nine cat lives already. Yeah. And the different branches led me to to directing and i love it it's where i feel the most alive it's a factory it's it's or a laboratory rather where i feel really like that all of these branches have led to that and you know i now i'm painting and so there's different things that i'm always kind of curious about different forms of expression uh but it's it's taken a while, you know. I'm I'm 44, and most people at this point they're thinking, oh, I'm gonna work 10 more years. Where I kind of feel like this is the beginning of me working 20 more. Mm -hmm. um, and and just now, like I said, do I feel like I understand what it is to write a play or to act? Um, I played Oedipus in an adaptation of the Oedipus play last year, a very radical German expressionist kind of Lars von Trier looking thing. And that, that felt like there was kind of a breakthrough. So I'm fucking stoked, man. And I love people coming to LA where, you know, it's a, it's a cool epicenter of things, but the theater that I'm doing is very, uh, German inspired and European based and in Los Angeles there's not a lot of that and so I do feel like a sense of um, responsibility and sort of uh, that, that that I'm supposed to kind of do that that I'm supposed to introduce audiences to that type of, of art. It's one of the things I love about California and, and Los Angeles is that there is some theater, uh, uh, but it, it, it's always sort of been on the cutting edge. I remember when I, I'm from New York City where theater is massive. Everything was theater. Right. People I right. knew uh, um, grew up in theater and everybody had a, a, a play reading or everyone had something going on. And you would see famous actors like Tony Randall. You know, he was known for the odd couple, but dedicate his life to theater. Every aspect yeah. of it into producing, writing uh, theater, making sure that kids could get affordable tickets to see theater. And so uh, it's, it's great what you're doing in California because it's there, but people just have to find it and see right. um, quality uh, entertainment. There's so many other things that people look for when they go to, to Los Angeles. So it's great that you're doing, we'll have links in the descriptions to Riot Act um, and to uh, your Instagram, if people wanna check you out what you're up to. And of oh. course, painting, because I was looking at your painting this is something, how long have you been painting? Um, not entirely long. I try to keep that like not, because I think painting's an interesting thing, you know, because uh, it's probably one of the last art forms that um, still has a lot of mystique and mystery to it. Mm -hmm. It's also a very private thing in that like, 
you know, I'm not doing typically like a lot of live videos of the process. Right. Mainly because it would freak people out. They would probably commit me to a psych ward if they saw what I was doing. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated. But, but not that long. And I think because I'm new to it, because I'm curious, because I, I, I always tell people this. I said, you know, my, my sister's a painter. She's extremely good. She did this painting behind me uh, of Griffith Observatory. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a, you know, I love her and I'm a big fan of her and she's always inspired me. Um, and I said to her when I started this not too long ago, I said, I, I would love to try this. I'm not trying to step on your toes. And so if you can give me some pointers and some insight, that'd be great. And she was, she was great about it. And I, I said, you know, I, the first couple of things I did, they weren't perfect, but there was definitely some flow and it was interesting. And I was able to kind of maybe capture something. Um, and I said to her, you know, at 44, I think I can do this. Because if I did this in my, you know, 29 or 30, I would add so much expectation and judgment on myself, Jason, that I, I don't think I'd be able to do it. And so, Again, whether it's painting, whether it's writing, whether it's acting, whether it's making fucking guacamole, um, I try to approach things with very little expectation and little judgment. And I think that that's kind of why it works. Well, uh, you know, when I was in New York, I used to work for a film company called Troma. They made, they, they, yeah, they made yeah, 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 yeah. They made the Toxic Avenger, a far cry from uh, 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 Shakespeare. But Lloyd Kaufman, uh, the president of the company, would always say, in everything you do, thy known self be true, uh, Shakespeare, you do it because you uh, enjoy it, because it means something to you first. Your career, whether yeah. it's acting, writing, directing, painting, you're doing the things for you first. If other people um, enjoy them, and they seem to, that's a great thing. But you, you, it's funny that in this chapter of your life, you've, you've sort of, it is a whole new chapter for you, which, which is great. Most people don't, uh, don't have that. What I love about doing these interviews, I do them almost every day. We start with something like, where's the kid from the Lay It Down video? And then underneath that, you have a great human story um, and a lot of quality work that people can um, check out. So it's, it's fun to see that kind of, uh, to peel those different layers off. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I'm kind of, um, I try to take the pretension away. I, I, you know, the adage of take the work seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously is what I adhere to. So, you know, like I do commissions for people all the time. Um, and, and I'm constantly learning, you know, the thing that I think during the pandemic that I really took away for me personally was that Because I'm now in this old man place where you know I'm not I'm not a young dude anymore. Um, I think that there's kind of a typical uh, spirit where you feel like you're a finished product as a as a human being, but more specifically as an artist or somebody that's uh, creating things. You feel like you're a finished product. You feel like you have all the knowledge and wisdom. And that's a real trap. And so what I try to do and what I think is something that, that helps me is that the younger generation, my niece, my nephew, Gen Z, whatever the gen is after that, like they're, that's who I try to learn from because you can read an old book and you can learn from people that come before you, but if you don't listen to the people that are coming after you, you're really missing out. And so I, uh, I try to keep that pipeline really, really open so that I can, I can be pliable and I can be teachable. I think that's a, a smart way to look at it. I don't think that age has to be a, a death sentence or a, uh... Or, or the end of something, in fact, like you say, you can learn from new people. It's okay to uh, uh, 
um, see what's out there, what's coming next. Some people fear technology. They, they don't want to live in the present. Right. Um, right. As you said, there's so much to learn from what's ahead. And uh, it's not, it doesn't have to be a death sentence. It's good to try something new at all aspects of your life as you're showing, you know, painting. It, it, you still have the time to do it the way you want to do it. Yeah, and you know, it's another thing where it's like, Because I have two degrees in theater, you would think that I'm probably a bit of an academic or, or an intellectual about those things. And I guess that's true in that I have, you know, book smarts about stuff. But honestly, the street smarts and realizing that it's not a meritocracy is really important. Um, I just met a, a, a person who's now a great friend of mine. And she played Antigone in this in this Oedipus play. It's just her and I, two people on stage. And she had never done theater before. And we're in this, you know, kind of fucked up, beautiful, industrial space. And essentially, it was her doing a monologue for 75 minutes uh, while I kind of walked around bloodied and old and partially naked at times, fully naked at other times. And it's a, it is a bleak piece. She didn't study it, she didn't have a degree, but when we first had our, our first conversation about it, I just knew that she was prepared and that she had the right brain for it. And we never talked about the nuts and bolts. We talked about it really just as story and as human beings. So there was no real technique. I just said, you know, try to be as honest as you fucking can and I'll be here and we'll just make it as though there's no audience at all. And, uh, and that worked. That super duper worked. Yeah, and talk about uh, an experience and people say sometimes being on stage is like being naked on stage in your case. Uh, literally sometimes, but uh, yeah. that experience. And I've never done that before, so I was terrified. And truthfully now, Jason, at the end of the day, that part of the play was probably the like, least intimidating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it shows you that. It, it shows the chops, you know, to have to do something like that. It's one thing to make cameos and, and, and appear and things, but then to be on stage for that long and, and something that emotional and something that, uh, uh, deep, it, it, yeah. as you said, it's another uh, another part of your career, another chapter in your career and in, in your life. And it's great that it's something for, that fulfills you. I've met so many actors, I've worked with so many different people, um, and there's different types you meet. There's the type who are, uh, uh, you know, I come in, I do my scene, and I go home. And then there's yeah. the type that this, this is a life choice for, and the quality of what they do is about them, not about. Uh, you know, what's the next project? And obviously you can see that this is your, uh, your passion. It is for better or worse, man. I'm a pirate. I'm a total pirate. And like, it's not for the faint of heart, but, but, but I love it. I was going to ask you a question. I was thinking about this, Jason, yeah. since like, this is, this is what you do. You're the, you're the pro with this podcast. Um, I wonder what happened to the, to the actor that played the little girl. I, I, we're going to work on it. We should track her down, man. Yeah, I, I agree with you. So Stephen only remembers so much. It's funny what how much he does remember, but he's made so many music videos and so many tours, and and maybe there's some substances at different types of his career, I'm sure. But uh, So he wasn't positive, and maybe with the younger people he wouldn't know, but Stephen still talks to Marshall Burrow quite often, and I bet you Marshall knows. I, I, I bet you he, he has an idea, and like, so we'll, we'll see. It could definitely be an interesting, uh, uh, where are they now? Same with Mary, who plays the lead actress in the video. Uh, I'm, I'm beginning my search for her, her a little bit. Uh, she's that, though, those conventions and things, these album covers have become so famous. Tony Katane, who's no longer with us, but she, would, she was signing those rat records like crazy. I think there'd be a lot of people who'd like to see uh, Marianne uh, promote Invasion. Invasion was my favorite of the Rat Albums, I, I think. And yeah. uh, that cover is so iconic. So we have to see if we can't uh, uh, find that young lady and see if she had an acting career that's continued. 
You you were pretty. I think she did. That's why I'm I'm curious. Is that I think, uh, I I think she did more than that. Yeah. So I'm going to do a little more. You know, part of this has been uh, you know a, a, pro, a private eye <laughs> with with finding people. You weren't uh, so hard to find because you've left a, a, such a long body of work, um, uh, and you know, lay it down is just a, one of uh, like as I said, tons. Of credits, would I enjoy chatting with you? And as I said, yeah. in the description, people can check out more about you. We've only scratched the surface. People can look at all of your different work and follow you uh, socially to see when you'll be performing. Not okay. enough people get to experience real theater. One of the things about living in Las Vegas, I say the culture here is not <laughs> not so much. They're trying every now and then. But, uh, okay. I, you know, I, I had a, a, a friend, a, a lady friend that was that's born and raised there and uh, over the pandemic. And I didn't even know anything about downtown Vegas. And uh, old Vegas is cool. Yeah. And no they're, they're working on it to kind of preserve that uh, and, and add some, some new life there. And they are trying, people are trying. Uh, but so people can follow you and see when you're going to do it, get to experience uh, some theater and see the other things and also see your schedule of appearances things like that. And definitely look forward to seeing you when we're in Los Angeles uh, and uh, the reunion uh, of sorts. Uh, it, it, Love it. So I really you. hope that happens, man. That would be, that would be a real, a real treat. Yeah. Well, I'll get your information after this because I know Steven wants to send you some stuff okay. um, as well. So thank you so much everyone for watching. Thank you. Wit. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, uh, check out all the links in the description and we will see you again. Thank you.